Hello and welcome to my studio. Uh, so today I decided to do a video uh, much sooner than I thought I would be. Uh, so if you are new to my channel, uh, you might want to go back and hit pause and go back and watch um, the flip through I did of the brightly colored altered book keepsake journal. That way you'll kind of see what we're working on. Um, this is going to be the second part of a tutorial that I started. So you might want to watch the first part if you want to kind of craft along. And um, I decided to go ahead and do a kind of a, a second part. And this is actually just the beginning. I didn't go ahead and finish a whole signature because I had uh, started it yesterday and I kind of got stuck and wasn't sure what I was doing. And um, then I woke up in the middle of the night and I had all these ideas, couldn't get back to sleep. And so first thing this morning, I wanted to get at it before I forgot what I dreamt up last night. So it took me a little while to do this. And I've often had people kind of ask me, how does your brain work? So I thought rather than kind of do a, a demo and samples like I usually do, that I would break it down that way. If you're crafting along with me and you want to you know, go find your papers and get your next uh, thing set up too, then you can do that. And I think it's easier sometimes if you break it into small pieces and then that way it doesn't feel so overwhelming and you get kind of a more cohesive look. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we're working on an altered book. This is a reader, Reader's Digest. In the first um, part, I talked about how I chose my book. And then one of the uh, things that I changed about the brightly colored flip through that I did um, is where I put this recess place. So I did that first and that was starting at the back of the book. So my idea was to then just kind of move back towards uh, the middle where I'm going to uh, end up paper folding a heart. But before I did that, I kind of wanted to get, you know, the next sections around that finished. So I thought I had an idea about what I was going to do here. And if you've watched the last ones, you know that I, I did a demo about how to make this little booklet. And I want this to go in front of the back section that I did. So I you, you might wonder why I didn't actually even put the tag on still. I haven't decided. And I'm glad I waited. And you'll see why um, as we move forward. So I'm going to put that aside for now and kind of let you see what my dream was last night. So when I started this book, uh, you'll remember, I sectioned off what I knew I wanted to put in here. Um, that was the folded heart, so I've put paper clips to either side of the pages that I'm gonna need to fold that. And then I left three pages on either side of that heart to do kind of a back and front cover to my heart. So that's what I'm gonna work on today is the back cover. Now, when I had my original idea, I was just gonna attach a signature to what is the lid of my recessed box and then use what is gonna be that front and back cover um, to my heart as my other attaching point. So I went ahead um, and in the last episode, I hadn't done this yet, but I had a bunch of book pages still in here and it only ended up about an eighth uh, maybe three sixteenths of an inch of space there and I decided I think this is where I might want to add that uh, removable little book like I did in the first one so I thought I would go ahead and try to do that there so I took out all the pages and I took them out right down to the fabric binding and that's gonna work out great for me because now it's all clean um, and I can attach my new signature there now some books are put together differently, and that's kind of why I like these um, Reader's Digest, is they're newer. If you're my age, they're newer. Um, some older books, they've maybe made signatures that are stitched in, and then that's a little different. These will come out much cleaner on these newer books. So when I say new, I'm talking about like the 70s. So um, that's another good reason to choose this, this type of book. So I, I've taken that out. And originally, I had some papers that I thought I was going to do. I knew I wanted to put this book here. <clears throat> so I, I like to t have things coordinate. And I decided, like I said, to, to show you my choosing paper process because, I, you know, I like um, to mix up color as far as 
not be too repetitive from page to page just to give it interest. So you want to think maybe you'll go lighter and then darker and then lighter and then darker or alternate your colors or patterns or something just to keep your eye moving and not for it to get really exciting and bright and then really soft and the rest of the book unless that's your choice you maybe you want the book to have a feeling throughout it so you kind of I like to think of those things so this to me was really calm looking and this is also calm looking so I knew I wanted to I'm gonna have to spice this up a little bit so that it's not blah and blah okay so my dream was that I wanted to take this heart and in the last book I'll show you, I did, I did the heart, and then I just did plain paper, well, not plain, it's patterned paper, but I did the same paper on either side, just so it looked like the inside and uh, front and back cover of a book. And then I kind of did the same, a similar treatment in the way I set up these pages too, in the tucks. So it was kind of repeating out from the heart. In this one, I kind of want to do the same thing. So it kind of starts, it's repeating pattern, but then it'll change, okay? So this is where my heart is, and I have my front and back cover. So my idea was to make these, these two covers actually be pockets that go in from the top. And because it's a heart, um, the other thing I did throughout this book is kind of in my mind, think of all the little books, what I wanted them to uh, kind of be prompts for journaling. Um, I'm not a day-to-day -day journaler, but I like to collect things. So I like to break it down into more like, you know, reflections. This is a scrapbook, or this is treasures, the scrapbook, because it's like, kind of like a box. And then the next one was going to be reflections because it was kind of a mirror. And that could just be, you know, insights into yourself or, you know, whatever that means to you. So I kind of was keeping that theme throughout this book. So I decided that because this is my heart, I want to put on one side, the front side's going to be things I love about you. Um, and then the other side, things I love about me. Because oftentimes, um, if you have a partner in life or, you know, somebody that you care about, there's times where you are not so thrilled with them or you're you're you know you're in a bad mood about it you're grumpy or whatever it's nice to have a place to take the time and remember the good things and then it'll make you kind of not uh be angry or sad or whatever it is so i wanted to do that because i i think it's good when you have people you love to to always list the good things and then you'll have that to look back on in bad times or sad times you know that kind of thing and then we oftentimes don't um, look at the good things about ourselves. You know, we kind of um, just get, hard, we're hardest on ourselves. So it's good sometimes to take the time to think about the things that you like about yourself. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do on either side of the heart. So with that in mind, to me, then in my case, it's my husband and me. You know, it could be your best friend and you or your mother and you or whatever it is. So I decided I wanted this to be more masculine and more feminine. So for this side, I knew I'm gonna have this one here and I decided that I would start out with kind of making a pattern how I wanted my, my folds to go because I'm gonna add more than just that one pocket in here. This is gonna be an entire signature. Now, I have a few people, uh, seems like there's a lot of people picked up this hobby over COVID. And so I'm new too, and I know that we don't always know all the terminology and that kind of thing, tools and tips and that kind of stuff. So I, I might be repetitive in my videos, but I'd like to always share that because you never know when it's somebody's brand new to this. So for terminology, um, I learned that a folio is basically when you fold two pieces, imagine this is like um, a cover of a book. Um, this would be a folio. Each paper that you just fold in half inside is a folio. When you combine all those together, it's a signature. So if this had pages in it, this would be a signature. And I could maybe add multiple signatures and that's gonna make my book, okay? So that's just kind of, if I'm using a term, that's what I mean. So 
I'm going to call this whole thing I'm doing a signature, and maybe this part is a folio, okay? Just for reference. So this is my um, back cover. Where is it? My back cover to my heart. And I decided I want it to be a pocket. So the papers that I'm working with, as you know, are one-sided cardstock. Um, so I have to always keep that in mind. So I took, I'm, I'm doing a pattern that I did just with colored cardstock. So just plain, so that um, I'll have it later for reference uh, when I do some similar ones. And you can vary it up from here, but it kind of gives me the basic measurements and things I need. Reader's Digest are all the same size. So, I, you know, I know that I need seven and a quarter inches for the height of my page to cover it. And it's five and an eighth for the width. So I took my eight and a half by 11 cardstock and the first thing I did was I used my scoreboard. Now you can use, I've shown this one many times. Um, this is just a small little recollections paper cutter that has a cutter on it and a score uh, little thing on it. Now some of them don't come, mine came that way. I understand that you can order these if yours didn't come with one, but if, even if you don't have this, you're, there's a little uh, trough here that where your blade runs through. You can even just use that without the scoring tool um, as your guide, and then just use like a bone folder or something to make your mark. So you can do that if you don't have the whole big scoreboard. Now this scoreboard that I have, I love. This one's a Martha Stewart. I got it um, on clearance for like $8 at Michael's quite a while ago, but they, you know, if, it, you might still be able to find them. I've shown this before. Um, it came with a little flip up thing here. This one has patterns for making boxes and greeting cards and envelopes. If I can get it open there. And it has all the dimensions right on the board. Um, I did a demo in a different video where I made all these sizes so you could kind of see what they looked like. Um, but this is a great handy tool if you don't have this yet and you're gonna do this a lot. So basically what you do for just scoring is there's little ridges every eighth of an inch. So you just put your paper into the corner and then I did a score mark at five and an eighth uh, because I know that's how wide my paper, is, my paper is, or my page of my book. Okay, and then I just made little notes for myself so that I remember what I did. So I cut it, I cut the height to seven and a quarter first, and then I scored, this is my number two, I scored at one, at five and an eighth. And then um, I went to the other, <clears throat> the other side because I'm gonna make this a pocket that goes over my book page. So I folded that one, and then I went again, and I scored at, uh, five and an eighth for the next side because I know that's where my book fold is. And then this time I went over another uh, eighth of an inch so that I have kind of a tiny little book binding there. You see that? That way those pages that I took out of my book, this will fit in that little trough and I can glue it in. So I made that. And then I'm going to leave this little tab on it because I'm going to use this I'm kind of like an envelope. It's gonna help sandwich um, and tuck into my next folio. So let's get rid of that. So it's gonna kind of go in like this. Here's my, uh, these are three pages that I left. You could leave two or you could even do one. I liked leaving three because I didn't know what I was gonna do and that gave me enough thickness if I needed this for actual support. And in this case I do, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, use a glue stick and glue these three pages together. Now, the reason that I use glue stick instead of like a wet glue Mod Podge or anything is if you've worked with book pages, they're porous. And so if you get this wet, that's when you get ripples and stuff. If you look, you can kind of see this is a pretty good job the way this came out, but I used wet glue and so it could, you know, it could have a little waviness to it. So over here, I'm going to use, I want it to be nice and flat. So I'm going to use uh, just a glue stick. In fact, I can even do one page and just show you how easy that is. I'm going to go this direction because this is already kind of lumpy from working on it. So I'm gonna go this way where I have a nice flat surface. 
So I'm gonna take the paper clip off and I need a, a card, uh, works out great, any kind of old card. And I'm just gonna, I, I don't do the whole page at once because the glue will dry before I get all the way down. So I'm just gonna go to the edges, good. And then I'm just gonna use my little card and make sure I don't have any bubbles or anything. And then that way it's nice and flat. And then I can even pull back a little bit and then do the rest. Now this is gonna be inside of an envelope, so it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but if you get all the edges, you're good. And I go back and check those later um, if I need to add more. Okay, so that was two pages. And then I have a third. Once you've started doing this, you know, you find little things that make it come out a little cleaner and better. I'm gonna have a baby wipe here to kind of clean off my excess glue. If you don't clean off the glue, um, e whether you're using glue stick or wet glue, later on when you go to uh, ink your pages for, you know, add your antiquing, uh, wherever the glue is, is gonna act like a resist. It's gonna take the inking differently, which, if you're doing a grunge look, it actually looks really neat. I like, I kind of like it, but um, if you don't want it to look like that, I'm gonna move this paper clip out of my way. If you don't want that grunge look, then you might not want to do that. Okay. Get my edges good. Oops. And that just squeezes any extra glue out, make sure no bubbles. Okay, that made my page nice and stiff there. And like I said, later on, if you need to go back, you can and get the edges better. I'm not gonna worry too much about the bottom one and I'll tell you why here in a second. Okay, so I have that prepped and ready. If you wonder what these little where I put stuff away. My desk is a total mess, but this organizer, my husband gave me one of those little, um, it's like a little uh, for screws and nails and that kind of thing for your workshop. Just one of those little plastic ones with all the little, all these little drawers. They're great. He was getting rid of it and it kind of made a uh, back to my desk area so that I don't kind of go everywhere. And it's all these little drawers so I can keep things in there like my glue sticks and paper clips and, uh, ink pads and different things that I use all the time. They're just right here in front of me, so that's kind of handy. Maybe one of these days I'll get my workroom cleaned up enough that I could give you a little tour. So back to our book. So this was my heart again. I guess I should leave this here so I don't forget that that's the end of my heart. So I have my in-between pages. So what's going to happen is I'm actually going to, I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to actually just trim uh, maybe quarter, half an inch or something off the bottom of this book page. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want this to be a pocket that wraps around it. And I want to um, stitch this first. If I was just gonna glue it to the page and that be the bottom of my pocket, then I don't need to trim it. But I want to do some stitching around here and I need to do that before I put it over my book pages. So, you know, easier would be just to leave it like it is, and then you'd put just a little bit of glue here in the edge, the edges, and then you have a, a two-sided pocket. So that kind of, and then the book pages will, are gonna actually be a divider in between my pockets. So that was just one idea that I came up with. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then I want to use this lip to continue and make another little folio. So the signature is gonna actually be two pockets and then more stuff. So to do that, I just grabbed another uh, different color so we can, for the sake of this uh, instruction here, and I'm going to use this lip and I could, I could sew this on and I might, 
I'll, I'll, you'll find out next episode, but I'm going to attach that to this lip and then this whole whole piece can be glued to what was the lid of my uh, little recessed section. So I left this on here um, because you can do different things from this point. Um, and so my pattern, I'll, I'll finish my pattern later maybe. Um, I, I left this on because my original idea is I want this booklet to go and tuck in this way. And this isn't big enough in this pattern because of the size paper. Now, if you're using 12 by 12 cardstock sheets, which I am, my my leftover part is going to be more here. So if it was double-sided cardstock, I could just fold that over and that's my tuck. But in my case, I'm using one-sided cardstock. So this part's white. So I'm going to show you what I ended up doing. But that kind of gives you the basic idea. Um, from here, you could make this be a pocket this way. Um, you know, there's just a lot, diagonal pockets, whatever. But it kind of just gave me how I was going to put it together so that I remember how, how I was going to do that. Now, my little trough here is the eighth inch wide. And on this one, I just folded it in half. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to offset it to the end, to the edge. This is where I could attach that removable book. So I'm going to do that. Now, it'll be easier, I think, for you to see when I show you my patterned papers I picked out. Um, but I wanted to go through just the idea of coming up with an idea, making a pattern for yourself so that you don't forget what you did. I have a hard time repeating my ideas just because I keep will come up with a different one. But sometimes you like how a book went together and you want to do multiples of it. And so this kind of is like not having to invent the wheel every time. So I'm going to keep these. I'm going to probably make more notes on them and things. But for this one, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, the third thing I put on, so I, I put on here, uh, one, I needed to score at the five and an eighth. And then I needed another score mark at a, an eighth of an inch from that. So I did that. And then I, I put a note to myself here. This is my two inch. Um, I use this all the time too to make these little notches. I kind of like making notches on things um, because then if, if you give the book away and you didn't have that notch there, they might not realize that's a pocket. So I like to do that, plus it's easier to pull out whatever you've done. So I just kind of take my two inch punch and then I just eyeball where I think the center is and just make a little notch. So that's a great tool you'll use a lot if you're new. So I have that, I'm gonna set that aside. Now I'm gonna show you how I got my papers. This took me probably an hour and a half to figure that out because I'm so particular. But I, I picked out um, two, uh, I, when I had my dream, I thought I was going to use this paper because I remembered this paper from the book. And I remembered that in the other book, I had stripes that went this way, just on either side of my heart. And I kind of liked it because my heart is just going to be plain book page that I'm going to dye at the end. But the inside covers then would be interesting to see as you have it sitting on a shelf. So that was my original idea. But mine stripes went this way, which wasn't a problem. But if I did it, the pocket idea, my bird was going to be on the wrong side and I wanted it to be there and, or they wouldn't have been the same. I would have had a bird on one side. Anyway, I changed my mind. I just decided I didn't like that. So I found two papers that had, um, two birds that I could do the front and the back cover and one went this way. And then this is my masculine one. So it's, it's like index kind of paper and it has a bird, but you see they're on opposite they're going opposite directions. So that's kind of what my, around my heart's gonna look like. You could pick anything you want, but that was just, that was just what I came up with. So I'm gonna use that one, I'll set that aside. And then I knew the pattern for this, so I went ahead and did it. So this is my, uh, the side that's gonna have the things I like about, things I love about me. And then this'll be the other part of my, folio and I needed I had I had yesterday I had picked out this paper to go with this book so I went ahead and I made my score mark and so this one is going to go like this and glue to this uh, lid 
So my problem, not a problem, but my issue I had to deal with was I wanted, uh, this was just plain paper. So I wanted to make some kind of pocket or something that can go, you know, I like the more pockets and places to put things, the better. So I found a paper that I liked that coordinated with this, that I could stripe across the bottom that had some interest. And I didn't cut this off yet because I wanted to show you, this is gonna be perfect, a uh, little amount to cut off and use my uh, thing that I showed in the last episode. I'll be able to make a cute little tag with that. So I like to, the scraps from the papers that I use, I like to use those inside for my cards or my little, um, my little tags and things. So I'll be cutting this off and then I needed to find, because this is just single sided paper, this side I don't have to worry about because it's gonna glue here, but this side it was gonna be white and I don't want that. So I found um, this paper. It actually came out of a different pack. Um, when I was doing this, you know, I started out with two packs of papers that I thought I was gonna use and I thought, I had to decide what I was gonna do here. I needed to either uh, use thinner paper maybe, or one-sided paper, or find instead of this a double-sided cardstock to use. So I pulled out some other pads that might look good um, with this, and I ended up, I really liked this one I almost used for that side. Um, it's from a Tim Holtz pack. I could have used this one maybe, but I, I didn't have the lines when I went the wrong way. It was the same one from here. Um, so, you know, I wasn't quite sure. And so I found this out of a different, pa a different pack, but it coordinates good. So I'm going to use that there. And then I'll make, because this is so simple, I'll make prettier cards that have more interest that will tuck in here. And then also this is where I'm going to put the... Uh, I'll put a ribbon that's gonna go. I haven't put this together because I wanted you to see the papers and I'm gonna do stitching on here. So I have to think of what order I'm gonna do things. Like I need to stitch this on. Before I glue anything in, I need to put a ribbon down here so that I could tie in an extra book. And so it'll go like this. And I decided, because this all looks good together and it's a little more punchy, that I would use this for my little uh, book that's removable. So I still need to find an inside paper for here and put my paper, I'll maybe use mixed media paper in here this time, and, and it'll be a removable book. So uh, you'll see this, I'll, I'll show this when I do the next part, when I have this all, all finished for you. So that's gonna go there. And then I needed something for here to kind of hold this book. I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do here yet. Probably gonna be an angled pocket maybe um, because it's kind of asking for that. But here I know I wanted to do this, uh, a tuck for this book. Um, I've put rhinestones here that stick up. So whatever I put here to tuck it can't go up, you know, past the rhinestones or they'll knock them off. And then I didn't want a pocket that goes in this way because then I hide my bird. So it kind of made me want to do this. So I wanted to show how I came to that too. Um, this, this piece was attached here to the paper and in my dream, I folded that over if I was using two-sided cardstock, but it would have been blank and I wanted to use this paper. So I just trimmed that off and decided that was going to be my my edge. And that was kind of boring to me. I could leave it just like that plain, but then it was kind of neutral and then neutral in a way for me. So what I did was I thought, I had found this other paper um, from that Mariposa pack um, that I wanted to use just when I wanted to maybe punch up color. So I took a strip off of that that wasn't, um, didn't waste this kind of part of the design. It was just a plain, plain part. So I took that off and I went ahead and left this and I, I it, from past experience, this is one layer of cardstock and you're gonna be putting a book in and out of it. 
So it's kind of nice if this is a little bit thicker. So I knew I wanted to kind of double up. So I cut another strip of this red, just so I have a little punch of color. There's a little bit of red in my bird. And I haven't antiqued any of this yet, but when I do, it's gonna dull it, the red down a little bit. So I think it's gonna look really nice and be just kind of a hint of color. Now, when I did that too, it kind of, knowing my paper pack that I'm using that has a lot of pink and stuff in it, I'm thinking that this kind of maybe looks a little too black and tan kind of thing, especially when I'm looking at this. So I want to transition and kind of add a little touch of that, which I can do maybe in this um, in this side, but I haven't figured that out yet. So I started um, thinking I want to add a little bit of pink. And so I grabbed some different pink ones. Um, I think I started out with this one. And I just kind of laid it out. And I'm doing this for you now, just so you can kind of see how the thought process is. So this was a little, um, it was too neutral, too close to the same, and then that. So then I could do this. And that's okay, but just that little dot for how kind of fancy this looks, that looked a little kind of um, childish maybe, or a little too cutesy. So I decided not to do that one. I, I kind of turned it around to this um, glittery lacy part. But when I put that down, then it's just too, the pink isn't enough, it's too white. So I, I don't want to use that one. And then I picked out this one and same thing. I needed the contrast to be in between. So I swapped that and that was just a little too boring to me. And I didn't, the pink was not maybe the right thing. So I didn't do that. And then I, I found this one. This was actually the first one I picked. Whenever I pick something, I, I, not that I'm second guessing myself, but I want to like look at all my options and then decide this was actually the first one that I picked and I like mixing pattern. So, uh, I liked that it had the scale of the pattern and the type of the pattern was different. So like, this is a floral, this is a pattern, and this is a stripe. If you do any decorating, you kind of know how all that works. Um, and then you want to also maybe change the width of the, so they're not all the same widths. So this is the order that I'm going to do it in, I think. And then I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do, this, do, to do a scallop or something because of this on the red. So I just took another piece so that I could try it out. And when I had done something like that, again, it's kind of neutral, neutral, bright. And I didn't like that my pattern was right next to the pattern, the scallop of this. I needed to alternate it. So I did. I decided not to do it on the red. Um, I had kind of laid it out like this so you could kind of, kind of see. So I ended up doing it on my music page piece. I'm not going to use that. So I'm back to my original. I liked how the red uh, made the scallop pop. And I'll actually probably use some antiquing on here um, first to make that even pop more and give it a little shading. Now, a, something that I do when I don't really know what, I, what I'm gonna like the best is I start out lighter and then if I wanna go darker, I will. For this one, I could use black um, because there's black in here, but that might be too much. So what I will do is I will use my vintage photo on here first and see if I like it. And if I don't, then I can add black to just the edge. So my vintage photo will be on the this part, but black just on the very edge. And I think I might end up liking that, but I won't know till I try it. So this is gonna be my tuck for my book. And then I'll probably wanna repeat some of that bright color in tags and things here. So I think that's all I'm going to show you for now. I wanted to show that just so you could kind of um, get an idea of how to, when you're stuck and you don't really know uh, where you're going, to give yourself the time to make a pattern, think about it, think about where you might want to stitch things so you think about how they need to go together. <clears throat> get your papers all coordinated to a way that is, you know, that you like the contrast and that it's pleasing to you and you know it's obviously not matchy matchy but it's um it all looks cohesive so 
that's where I'm at. I'm gonna spend hours now doing my inking and stitching and making little things to go inside and making this book. And then I will do another video um, kind of showing you how it ended up and then we'll move on to the next next part. So um, go grab your paper packs and your book and I hope you're crafting along with me. If you're enjoying these videos, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit that little button so that you don't miss out on uh, one of the steps that we do. And uh, anyway, enjoy the rest of your day and go make something. Bye.